Who will be the last one standing? Will it be New Orleans? Will it be Indianapolis? Will it be Denver? Which team will remain undefeated the longest? Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz, CBSSports.com's NFL columnist Clark Judge. Glad to be with you here on the end zone presented by newbie phone the navigation phone from Garmin Ian Eagle will be back with us next week and uh, Clark you look at these three teams and first of all nobody thought New Orleans would get to 6 and 0 for the first time since 1991 a lot of people thought Denver wouldn't have six wins all season they're 6 and 0 and then Indianapolis is a team that's just rolling right along and Peyton Manning's having maybe maybe the best season of his career which says a lot when you look at these three teams and you talk about who's going to stay undefeated the longest you look at schedules who points out to you that has that, uh, that clear sailing? Well, I, I think it's either Indianapolis or New Orleans. And uh, the reason is because I look at what Denver's got coming up. And Denver's got Baltimore at Baltimore. And then they've got Pittsburgh. That's a brutal road right there. Now, after they've got Washington, then it's San Diego and the Giants, as you see here. That's really a tough five-week grind. Um, but I think Baltimore is going to be the big hurdle because Baltimore is a desperate team. Um, Baltimore has to get things going now. And I saw them in the last game, and they lost, and they were concerned. And John Harbaugh assured me that, hey, we'll get things together. Well, they've had a week to work it out. Um, coming off a bye, I like them because they're home. Now, I know, you know, you say, well, Denver, you know, is, is rested too. Baltimore's a desperate team. Denver's not. And I think, actually, who's going to determine this will be an AFC team. I think it's going to be New England. Whoever can handle New England because Indianapolis, unfortunately, gets them first, November 15th. And then New Orleans gets them November 30th. The good news is they both get them at home. Yeah. The bad news is it's the Patriots in the beginning to get rolling. Yeah, and that's the other team to look out for now is the New England Patriots and Tom Brady. Again, the last two weeks against winless teams. So let's see what happens when they go yeah. up against better teams. But, yes, this is still a good New England team. I look at New Orleans and I say, you know what? This is the team that's going to stay undefeated the longest. And again, you look at schedule. Right. You and I had a conversation, and one of the other end zone segments is all about which is better, the AFC or the NFC. Well, if the NFC is that much worse than the AFC, and you look at New Orleans' <laughs> schedule, you say the Saints are going to stay undefeated the longest. Right. You got Atlanta this weekend on, on Monday Night Football, but it's home. And as you pointed out to me, they've beaten the, Saints, uh, the Falcons five out of the last six at home. Carolina is awful. St. Louis is awful winless. Tampa Bay, winless. Right. Then you talk about New England right. again. If New England beats Indianapolis, and Indianapolis, if I'm not mistaken, also still has to go to Pittsburgh, yeah. uh, you're talking about New Orleans staying undefeated the longest here. Yeah, I mean, we had something like this come up in a, a face-off with Pete and me on um, uh, CBSSports.com a couple weeks ago. And he took Indianapolis, and I took New Orleans for this very reason. Because you look at this game this week, and I'm talking about Atlanta, and you say, that's a possible trap for the Saints. But, as you pointed out, the Saints do have a history, a recent history of success against the Falcons, plus what do the Saints do best? They throw the ball. What do the Falcons not do very well? They're secondary. Look what Tony Romo did to it a week ago. So I look at that and say, you know, the Saints are going to win this game. And then they've got a three-week bye, you know, until you play uh, the, the, the Patriots. And so um, I think it's, it's a great situation for the Saints because if they can get by this, they can start rolling. Indianapolis has got to worry about that November 15th against uh, New England. They always play them every year, and it's always a big game. You, you know, Indianapolis is a tough game this weekend, and, and, and it, not because San Francisco is the greatest team in the world, but you talk about Baltimore being desperate. San Francisco is desperate, too. Now, they're on the road, yeah. but you got to assume Mike Singletary is going to build something up. Having said that, it is Alex Smith making a start. Yeah, here. but that's okay. I mean, because somebody had a conviction about this guy at one point, and it was Mike Nolan, Mike McCarthy, and they thought he'd be a franchise quarterback. They're going to give him the, his chance, and I think they should because they've got the franchise wide receiver now, Michael Crabtree, and he did more last week than I ever thought he would in his first game back. Now you give him a quarterback who can get the ball to him, and I'm talking about Alex Smith. Whether or not it happens, I don't know. I said earlier in this segment a couple weeks ago, I thought San Francisco would hit the wall about midseason. They're a little bit ahead of schedule here. It's a big game for the 49ers, but the Colts just know how to win, and they're playing in their favorite place, home. And you thought that maybe the San Francisco, you know, you talk about teams not defending the pass well in Atlanta. San Francisco, last couple weeks, last couple games, has not defended the pass very well either. That could be an issue when you're facing yeah. Peyton Manning, to say the least. Real quickly, Clark, you take a look at these three teams, Indy, New Orleans, Denver, which one of those three is the best? Uh, Indianapolis. I mean, again, by we, far? No, not by far. I mean, Indianapolis has got, again, the, the Super Bowl quarterback, and it's Peyton Manning. They're doing so much better than I thought in the wake of Tony Dungy, and I give Jim Caldwell all the credit in the world. New Orleans, I, I still am waiting for that collapse in New Orleans. I mean, almost yeah, happened. It almost happened. But yeah. maybe, but doesn't that make it more impressive that it didn't happen? Yeah, it does make it impressive. And this is a good team. This is a very good team. And they're playing well defensively. And that's the impressive thing. But so is Indianapolis. So you yeah. come back to the quarterback and you say, oh, Drew, Drew Brees is lights out. 
but then you got Peyton Manning. You know, I, I, I'll take Peyton Manning over Drew Brees. Nobody's playing better defensively in those three than Denver. Yeah, that's true. Let's see what happens up against this great offense right. in Baltimore. Let's not forget, Denver held New England to 17 points and zero. They have not a lot of touchdown in the second I half know, of the second season. second half performance is, is lights out. They're doing a great job. Mike Nolan gets all the credit. I'm going to take Denver to beat Baltimore this weekend. Uh, we'll see if they remain undefeated, though, the longest. I, that, that's going to be tough for them to do. All right, folks, for more uh, here on the end zone, presented by Newbie Phone, the navigation phone from Garmin. Be sure to stay right here with CBSSports.com. Take a look at what the Newbie Phone can do. Just want to let you know what it is. It's service from AT&T. You've got the GPS navigation, They're like what you'd expect from Garmin. You get three megapixel camera, email, text, everything you'd expect from a phone. It's also got AT&T service. For Clark Judge, I'm Jason Horowitz. For more on the end zone, right here with CBSSports.com. Take care, folks.